Doctor by Luis Enrique Ramírez from Universidad de Federal do ABC. We will speak on GERPA settling <coughs> module for arbitrary character. Okay. Thank you. First of all, I, I want to thank uh, the organizer for the invitation to, to give a talk here. I am quite glad to give this talk. So uh, this talk will be kind of a review of some recent papers with these collaborators, it's like international collaboration, Ukraine, Bulgaria, uh, Argentina, China, and Colombia. So this is kind of a review of uh, a few, a few papers on this subject, Gelfanseti models. And uh, okay, so I will start with uh, some conventions. Just uh, I will fix some n greater or equal to two. And by GLN, I will mean a complex uh, matrices of size n by n. Okay, so this talk will be about representations of GLN. But uh, I, in the title, I mentioned Gelfand setting modules. So the first thing I will define is what a Gelfand setting module is. So to start, we have this, uh, these inclusions here for GLN. We can have, actually, what we have there is GL1, GL2, GLN. Okay, so this is the, the enclosures I, I am describing there, just to the top left uh, corner. And these uh, inclusions, they induce an inclusion, inclusions for the universal enveloping algebras. So you have this. UN for the universal enveloping algebras. And then uh, we can construct, it is possible to construct this uh, very nice uh, subalgebra of the universal enveloping algebra of GLN. Giving how we consider the center of U1 the center of U2, etc. So this uh, collection of centers is the uh, will be will give you the generators of gamma. So this gamma is actually gamma. Where is gamma here? This gamma subalgebra gamma is called Galvan setting subalgebra, and it it has a very nice property. This is commutative by construction, and also it is a maximal commutative subalgebra. You can also give explicitly, where is, you can give explicitly generators of this gamma. Is it self-normalizing? Sorry? Is it self-normalizing? Self-normalizing what? Normalizing. Self-normalizing, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what what you mean with that, but uh, if you take it, uh, if you look at the set of things that preserve, so the commutator preserves it. The commutator preserves that. Yeah. Oh. So you can define the normal. Ah, I I don't think so. I don't think so. Slab. What do you think? <laughs> it's, it's, I think it No, I so actually I don't think so, but uh, maybe we, we can discuss that uh, after. Yeah, but it's maximal commutative, but it could be something even stronger commutative than self-normalizing. Okay, yeah, but uh, I I doubt, but okay. <laughs> Good answer. No, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> And uh, okay, but uh, we have a very nice commutative subalgebra inside the inside the universal enveloping algebra. What we are going to study here, or what I'm going to talk here, is about models that can be decomposable, like uh, 
in this way. So this is like a maximal commutative subalgebra. You can decompose in, uh, as um, direct sum of eigen spaces, generalized eigen spaces with respect to the action of the generators of gamma with respect to the, gen the action of gamma. Okay, so this is the kind of modus I will try to, to talk here. Um, just to mention some examples of why, why, where this category came from, you can think about Gelfand-Setting modules. Inside Gelfand-Setting modules, you have like category O. Category O is here. Inside category O, you inside these Gelfand-Setting modules, also you have weight modules with finite dimensional weight multiplicities, and also you have this are reducible objects on GT. It's a subset of a reducible objects of the category of all weight models. So, so it's a, a huge category. This is a, a, this has been studied for a lot of time, so it's, it's well known. This has been classified like. In 2000, uh, the classification ends with uh, Oliver Mathieu. And uh, here is a huge batch between these two. So this is kind of the situation. And uh, the classification of the irreducible objects? Yeah, irreducible objects. Yeah. OK. So, ah, and of course, here of finite dimensional models. A reducible finite dimensional models are all up, all, all there. And this is very easy to, to check. So finite dimensional models, they decompose with respect to maximal, maximal subalgebras. It's like finitely, finitely many, uh, no. This is like, yeah. Operators are uh, commuting as gamma is commutative, so they decompose in this way. But anyway, actually this theory came from the uh, realization of irreducible finite dimensional models. I will describe first uh, this realization and I will see how we can, we can generalize this construction. Okay? Ah, but before, general, general situation for gelfand setting models, irreducible stuff. Okay, so for any character, any Gelfand setting character, so any element here, we can construct, so this theorem says that uh, there exists at least one model with this character in its support, one irreducible model with this character in its support. So given a character, we can extend this to some, some irreducible model, and also uh, the number of uh, of uh, irreducible models up to isomorphism is bounded by this, where is this? By this number, Qn. So inside GLN, you have this, this bound for the number of irreducible models up to isomorphism. So when you say irreducible, you mean irreducible Yeah, irreducible Gelfand setting models. Yeah. Uh, now I will talk just about Gelfand setting models. Uh, okay, so problems that arise, if, if you look at this theorem, this theorem talks about existence and also uh, how many of them uh, you can have. So natural question is, is it possible given a character to construct a, an explicit model, give an explicit construction of this model, and also Given this character, is it possible to construct all of them, all irreducible objects? So, in this sense, uh, here, for this question, uh, early this year, actually, uh, Ben Webster announced a classification of 
Gelfan set in models, so these are reducible models. He can parameterize by some objects. This is a non-explicit uh, classification, but uh, this is a huge step in this theory. But uh, here I'm not interested in, in just uh, in this. I am interested in explicit construction of these models. Okay. So what I'm going to talk here today is how to construct, given a character, how to construct explicitly one module that contains this character in its support. Okay, so this is kind of a problem. I will start with a classical theorem for finite dimensional models. We know they are, they are Gelfand setting models. So how to construct this uh, realization for finite dimensional models. This realization is actually what give the, the basis for the Gelfand settling uh, models theory. I will write this just because I will use these indices a lot. Okay, so for finite dimensional models, you construct some objects, give a, a call Gelfand setting tableau. These objects are just uh, triangular arrangements of complex numbers, in principle. Uh, you have this n, n minus one, etc. The rows are given in this way. And for this kind of objects, for Gelfand setting tableau, the, the important for finite dimensional models are those that satisfy these relations. These relations you can, at some point, you can think about these relations about in this way. Oops. And here, 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 and here. So these relations means, okay, if you have an entry here and an entry here and the arrow is going down, if the arrow, where is it? If the arrow is going down, you have the difference should be an integer greater or equal to zero. And if the arrow is going up diagonally, you have a, an integer greater than zero, okay? So, there are some particular Gelfand setting tableau, very special, called a standard Gelfand setting tableau. So Gelfand setting theorem says, okay, consider a highest weight for finite dimensional model. This highest weight is actually a, a dominant integral weight. And for this weight, construct the set of all tableau standard satisfying uh, you, you have to start with some shift here, and then you construct the set of all standard tableau. That will, be, that will give you the vector space. The vector space is like span of standard tableau. So you have a, a set of tableau, you consider the free vector space over, over the complex number generated by this tableau. And they also give a very explicit uh, action of the generators of GLN on this set of tableau or in, or in this vector space, okay? It's very explicit. Given this on some tableau is just some rational functions and uh, some shifts of the tableau. Uh, one thing you should note here is that the Cartan subalgebra acts by multiplication on all elements on, of the basis. So this is actually a basis of Eigen vectors for the action of Cartan. Okay, so this is also a weight model in a natural way. Okay, so we have explicit formulas, we have explicit bases, and also 
the structure of Kelf uncertainty model is given in a very explicit way, like the generators of gamma that we call CMK, they act by multiplication by some symmetric polynomial. I will not care about this right now. Some symmetric polynomial uh, on this tableau. So this is a basis of eigenvectors for the action of gamma, also. So, okay, so finite dimensional models, they are completely described in this way. Okay, so the idea is, how to use this theorem in order to produce or to construct some new models. So we, can, we have two options. We can try to, we can try to change these uh, standard conditions and try to see how to construct or how to give uh, a structure of model on the set of tableau spanned by some set of tableau satisfying certain relations not necessarily standard. But we have to fix, in this first approach, we need to fix um, the Gelf and Settling action, the, the Gelf and Settling formulas. And there is a second uh, option is try to generalize the formulas. Very complicated formula, but can you generalize these formulas and constructs certain vector space where these formulas are well defined. And this vector space will be kind of in terms of tableau, tableau type model, okay? So I will try to, dis I, I will discuss uh, these two approaches uh, independently, okay? For the first one, relation models. The idea is exactly as I told you, uh, instead of considering a standard tableau, try to change the set of relations and see what is needed in order to have a modular structure. Uh, in this case, okay, what uh, we, we des describe is a general set of relations. So instead of considering this, we are going to consider subsets, uh, oops, subsets like this. Actually, I will go to the picture. Okay, so this subset R plus are all arrows going down between consecutive rows. R minus is all arrows going up between consecutive rows. And R zero are arrows between the top row. Okay, and then Okay, so this is what, uh, what we describe here. It looks ugly, but actually what we try to describe is arrows going down, arrows go, going up, and go and arrows, uh, horizontal arrows. Okay, this is what we're trying to say. Given any subset of this set of relations, we can construct a graph. So if you, if you have a pair, you just put an arrow going from the first one to the second one, for the first vertex to the second vertex. And also the set of vertices will, will be given by these indices. N1, and N, 2, 1, 2, 2, 1, 1. And so so this, this will be important. Those are, this is the set of vertices, and we put arrows depending on the set of relations we choose. Uh, for convenience, uh, all this graph will be a picture in this triangular, triangular way, okay? Okay, as I told you, our plus is just arrows going down, our minus are arrows going up. Okay, so we have what we, kind of uh, general situation for this uh, standard tableau. Okay, but in the finite dimensional case, we say that some tableau, uh, some numbers satisfying relations, sir, okay? So we are trying to say that in here. Uh, oh, okay, first of all, if C is a set of relations, we have this graph, 
We call this set of relation connect in the composable if the graph is connected. And also inside the graph, we will use these notations, this notation to say that there is a path going from this vertex to this one. Okay, now given a particular Gelfand setting tableau, we say that this particular Gelfand setting tableau satisfies this relation or this graph if you have these conditions. It's like uh, the difference is greater or equal to zero whenever you have an arrow going up or horizontal. Horizontal or arrow going up, you have greater or equal to zero. And if you have an arrow going, going up, oof, sorry, I, I say going down and horizontal, you have greater or equal to zero. Going up, you have just greater to zero. And also you have a, an, another condition that mentioned that if you have two, two components of the graph, two disconnected components of the graph, difference be between elements on this, uh, the difference between two elements in the same row, but in different uh, co components of the connected components of the graph, the difference should not be integer. This is the last condition. That will be, where is here? That will be this condition. Okay? So that means that uh, some tableau is a realization for this graph or a C realization. For these C realizations, we can construct a vector space with basis what? Just the basis will, be, basis will be the set of tableau such that you can add some integers and whenever you add integers, you have a serialization, still have a serialization. So consider all shifts by integers of some tableau that continue being a serialization. And then this is just a huge set of tableau. That will be the basis of the vector space. And now the vector space will be just the free vector space on this, uh, with basis this set B, C, T of L. Okay, so just one example. This tableau is a realization for this graph and also is a realization for this graph. So here the difference is greater or equal to zero and here the difference is greater than zero. So satisfy this relation. Also, these two are in different components of the graph. So the difference should not be integer as happened here. Okay? Also, this satisfies trivially this set of relations. So the set of relations is not completely determined by the tableau. This is important. Okay, what, uh, what is going on? Uh, we, we want to, to say, okay, when do we have a structure of model given a set of tableau? When do we have a structure of model? So this is the definition of admissible. Given a set of relations and a serialization, so you can construct this vector space. So this set of relations or this graph is admissible if for any tableau that is a serialization, this is a model with the action of GLN given by the Gelfand setting formulas. Okay, so that will be the situation. We are interested in, in graphs such that for any tableau, this vector space plus Gelfand setting formulas give you a mod. Okay, so it's uh, an example. What we have here is that these sets of relations or this graph is admissible. This is what the Gelfand setting theorem says, that this is an admissible graph or admissible set of relations. Okay, so the idea is how to characterize graphs that define a model or admissible graphs or, or admissible set of relations. So you look at the graph and we have a condition here 
FRC condition. This, so you look at the graph, and if for any, for any adjoint set of vertices, you have this. OK, so adjoint means that between these two, they are not connected inside the graph. But, uh, there is not a vertex in the middle that connects these two, these two vertices. That means uh, adjoining pair. So if you have uh, an adjoining pair, you should have this, uh, some of these two conditions should be satisfied. Or you have this diamond here, or they are connected in the top row. So they are connected here, but note that S is less than T inside this, uh, the graph. Okay? And we have kind of a characterization of admissible set of relations. So if you have a graph, you reduce the graph, uh, you don't have cycles inside the graph or loops, and you don't have crosses, then the graph defines an admissible set of relations, or is an admissible graph, if and only if it's a union of disconnected sets satisfying the condition before, this condition here. Okay, so we have a characterization in this case. And some examples. So, okay, so very important families of Gelfand setting models appear here. So generic models are given by the set of relations given by empty set. So if you don't have relations, you get generic models. If you have, you can restrict the action to SLN. So this graph will describe some fam a family of Caspidal models for SLN. And also you can have some Verma models constructed in the same way. You have here a family of Verma models given by this, this graph. So it's kind of nice families of models appears in this way. And of course, finite dimensional models that we, we already talked about. And uh, about the structure of all these models we construct. If C is admissible, this model is actually a Gelfand setting model. And also, the, the action of gamma is diagonalizable. So the action of gamma is given in the same way as finite, in the finite dimensional case. So you have actually CMK acting on any tableau is gamma MK all times So it's a very nice action. We didn't change the action. So in particular, the action of, uh, of, of gamma didn't change here. So it's a nice, nice family of models. OK, so this is the first approach. The second one, what happens if we try to uh, modify the formulas? in order to obtain a well-defined mode. So first of all, in the first step, we modify the relations, and we see what happened, what, what should be the conditions in order to get a model. But now, we are going to modify the formulas. What happens if we change the formulas a little bit? So, um, okay, so the, the idea is try to construct a huge model with basis parameterized in some sense by this set of tableau. So like integer shifts of uh, Gelfand setting tableau. And the action of GLN will change a little bit. How can we change the action in order to allow uh, this thing? Okay, so I, I put again the Gelfand setting formulas here just to notice what will be the problem in order to, sh with the formulas. The formulas are given in terms of rational functions, here and here, and you can have this pole, so you, you can have singularities. So given any tableau, you can have some singularities. So this is kind of the main problem here with the original formulas. 
So we are going, we are trying to deal, we deal with these singularities. Uh, okay, so what what do we what what do we mean with singularity for a vector or a tableau is a, is a difference that is integer. Note that you have VRS and VRT. So that means two entries in the same row are integer. If you go back, this is exactly the kind of differences that appear here in the denominators. Okay, so you sorry. Did I? Ooh, sorry. Here should be complex. Okay. It's complex. Yeah, yeah. It's a general. Yeah, I like yes. Actually, I changed that. You, my, my editor is not working. Okay, but anyway, so uh, here, of course, is uh, complex numbers. So you have this, and uh, so this is the definition of singular. Okay, so the first kind of uh, uh, results in terms of uh, generalizing these formulas was giving for singular pairs. So you have this situation. And for singular pair, with singular pair, when I mean that you have, for each row, you have at most one pair, x, y, z, w, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, in each row, you have at most one pair such that the difference is integer. So this is a, a set of, integ uh, of singular pairs. Okay. So the first uh, results in this, in this sense were given in these two papers, 16, 17. And uh, the idea, of, this is kind of a, uh, A short way to say, the, to, to mention this result is you have a very nice set of tableau inside, inside uh, in this vector space. They are parameterized by some permutations of this group. And this group actually is uh, isomorphic to S2 to the R. This is related to the fact that we, we are considering pairs here, okay? And uh, also, you have some, some polynomials and differential operators such that the action of GLN is given in this way. So the vector space now is a combination of tableau that are indices, in, that are labeled with some permutations. So the action of generators on some tableau of this way is given by this formula here, where here W0 is just, W0 is like the product of all possible, no, longest word, longest, longest permutation or word permutation. Okay, so we have a very explicit way to describe the action on this new space. And that will give you explicit new formulas for, uh, for this mode. Okay, and here we, can, we, we proved that actually we have a, a model structure. Okay? And this is also a Gelfand setting mode. And in this case, uh, the polynomials are of this form, products of VKI minus VKJ related exactly with the singular pairs. And the, the differential operators here are like that. Actually, they are, this is like a divided difference. It's a product of divided differences here. And also, this is related with the fact that we have singular pairs. Okay, so that was the situation for singular pairs. Now, uh, general case. What happens if you consider 
any Gelfand settling tableau, and you try to construct a new model generalizing these formulas. Okay, so we have this uh, this construction with Sadonaisky of uh, some model, a universal model. We call this universal model, parameterized by some again some permutations in this new set SPC. The general situation. I will explain the general situation in a few words in a moment. Okay, again, the basis is parameterized by some differential operators on uh, permutations. Uh, and we have an explicit, no, we have an action, we have a model structure. Okay, so this, this model was constructed like last year. And also there is a geometric construction of this model given by early Masorshuk and Vizhnyakova but this is a geometric approach and appears almost at the same, same time. Uh, okay, so just uh, for the general situation, we have this notation. I will not explain completely the notation, but this, these rational functions are related with the original Gelfand setting formulas. If you look at the Gelfand setting formulas, they are just like part of, of the coefficients that appear in the original Gelfand setting formulas. Here you have some intervals. These intervals are related with the kind of singularities you have for the tableau. And theorem, Futorni, uh, Grancharov, Ramirez, and Sadunaisky. So what we have is, a, is an action for any Gelfand settling tableau. This action, first of all, the basis is parameterized by these operators, the sigma, and the action is given in a very explicit way. Uh, oh, explicit. Uh, and this, actually, they are Posnikov Stanley operators. So in 2009, they described some polynomials, Posnikov and Stanley, they described some polynomials that at, uh, we realize they were just the, the, the correct polynomials we should consider. And here, when, when I say this uh, differential, that means consider the operator, differential operator associated with these polynomials. So we have a very explicit uh, way to describe uh, an action, a general action of, uh, in this mode. Okay, and okay. So before the, the conjecture, just uh, a few words about this general construction. So you have any Gelfand set in tableau. For any Gelfand setting tableau, you can do some partition of the tableau depending on, so any line, you can do some partitions. Uh, okay, and this partition is, is given by the following relation. You partition, uh, two elements are in the same block if the difference is integer. So in the case of a singular pairs, every block was uh, just two elements, and that, that was the partition. But here you can have a lot of elements in the same block. And in the same row, you, have, you can have like two, three blocks, et cetera, et cetera. So just to, sorry, so, just, I, I'm trying to explain what should be here, this, this group. This group is actually, yes, actually is pi, is just uh, SI1, I2, where, this is a block of, of size I1, this is a block of size I2, I3, I4, etc. 
Okay, so the correct uh, set that parameterize this uh, basis is this set of permutations. So it will be parabolic subgroups of this set of permutations. And uh, what else should I explain? These intervals here, what I mean here with A, B, K, is just I am referring to some of these intervals. And uh, what should, okay, so here you have uh, some technical construction, very combinatorial, but, uh, and I, I will not say much about this. Okay, but the, the good news is we have a very explicit construction. We can actually do computations on this model. We, this, very nice. And the conjecture here is that um, any Gelfand setting model, so if you have a character, this character has an associated one Gelfand setting tableau. I, I should mention that if you have a character here, you can construct uh, some tableau. And the way to construct this tableau is given by solutions on, uh, okay, I, I sh this gamma mk are actually the eigenvalues of the generators of gamma on the finite dimensional case. So, but uh, for any character, you can construct a tableau uh, by solving some, some equations. So, the idea is, oof, where is this? Given this character, we have a tableau, we have a model. In the previous term, we have a universal model. The, the conjecture is that every Gelfand setting model with this character in the support is isomorphic to some subquotient of this huge universal model. We call it universal, but we don't know. Actually, the conjecture is that the model is universal. Okay? And uh, I think that's all. Thank you. Oof, uh, no, jet, not jet. I actually, no, actually Sadunaiski. He was he was trying to construct this kind of representations for GL infinity. He was trying to explain last time, but uh, we didn't talk too much. But I know he was working with uh, Penkov, actually, uh, in this this kind of construction. Yeah, I. And tell, they, then the answer should be yes, it is possible. Yeah. Yes. Finitely many simple questions for the previous. It, it, it should have, if your conjecture is true, right? Or, or yeah, but uh, you mean. For, for this for this huge model, finitely many is yeah. This is a finite link model. It's a finite link model. Yes, and also uh, when when I when I say when I say that every every model appears as a sub quotient. So I am using actually this theorem. <laughs> uh, what is this theorem oh, for? Ah, yeah, I am using this term. So the number of irreducible modules up to isomorphism is bounded by this QN. Right, but I mean, it could happen for instance in a priori, right? So mm -hmm. even in a finite length category, you could have infinitely many uh, sub modules, obviously. Yes, and but. So it could be just a standard for creating any kind. Uh, yeah, actually, actually for 
Ah, actually, I didn't mention that, but for this uh, universal model, actually, finite dimensional models can be constructed in this way. If you look at finite dimensional models inside here, they appear as there is n and minus one. No, 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 actually you have qn copies of, uh, uh, of finite dimensional, finite dimensional model. So this is a huge model. You start with the, the character associated with finite dimensional model. Inside this model, you have uh, as many as qn copies. All of them are isomorphic uh, to the finite dimensional model. So, so uh, they are sub quotients. Sub -quotients. They appear like yeah. sub quotients. Yeah. So and it it can happen for for many many situations. Uh, in another thing is all relation models are also particular cases of this construction. And for the relation models, we have the same situation. All relation models appear inside here uh, as many times as QN. So this is, uh, this is kind of what happened. But uh, we know this is true for, for SL3. Every, every, every irreducible Gelfand setting models appear, uh, appear as a sub quotient of this. For, I mean, yeah, SL3. You can restrict the, the formulas to get SL3 models, and then you, you have a construction. OK? OK, thank you.